My name is Pam Gray and I am the Educational Outreach Coordinator for New London County 4-H in Connecticut. I have been working with 4-H in after school and at the county level for 24 years now, a long time it seems. And my public speaking experience. So when I was in school, I was super shy and I did not like doing public speaking at all. And I started getting a little bit more used to it when I got into high school, you have to do some public presentations. So I, I did okay, but I was never really comfortable doing it. And then in my position working in 4-H, especially I worked in schools for about 12 years and I would need to get up in front of parents on parents night or when we had events there would be big 4-H programs for University of Connecticut and sometimes there would be 20 people in the audience and sometimes there would be 200 people in the audience. So my trick for helping myself feel a little bit more comfortable in public speaking is I would, I would kind of pretend to myself to be, you know, kind of like, this is Mrs. Gray, the professional speaker. And so it's almost like I would think of myself as being an actor or I would ask myself, okay, how would I act? How would I speak if I was a professional speaker or a professional person? And that always helped me feel a lot more comfortable in front of people talking. It's always handy. Today, I don't have any notes, but most of the time, it's very handy to have some notes in front of you for me I usually just write down kind of an outline of what I want to say. And it also helps me to stay focused so I can be spontaneous, but then not lose track of what I'm doing. And I've also learned if I'm going to be speaking very formally that I have to practice beforehand. I'll say it my speech out loud several times to myself. I don't really like doing it in front of another person, but I found just doing it by myself out loud is really, really helpful. Some of the other times in my position and through 4-H, we have a lot of different events. Um, Mr. Steve, who's here tonight, has been in a lot of 4-H programs with me. Sometimes the audience are mostly kids or teens. Sometimes the audience can be parents. Sometimes the audience are professionals from the community. So I've gotten more comfortable talking in front of all different kinds of ages. I also, as part of my job, do a lot of programs at schools. So I've gotten used to going into a classroom and doing a program or going to a PTO or some other parent-teacher organization and talking about 4-H and the programs that we do. Uh, let's see. I would say all together, I probably in the course of my job will need to speak to some group of people at least once a month, if not more often. And public speaking also helps me to run meetings or to be in a meeting. And I 
it helps me to not be quite so shy about speaking up if I want to share anything or if I have an opinion or a voice. And the more that I've done it, the more comfortable I feel. So I would like to open this up for anyone who might have any questions. I think Sky has questions. Sky, I'll unmute you. So, um, if if you or if you have a crown when you're uh, when you're really shy and stuff, um, would, was there any ways you would try to you would talk differently? Because when I'm nervous, I'd talk way faster than I usually talk. Yes, I find myself wanting to speed up. In the beginning, it was harder for me to slow down. That is part of when I'm practicing by myself. I'll purposely practice slowly. And, and I found that when I feel like I'm talking too slow is when I'm really talking just right for people. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, okay, Angela raised her hand, so I'm gonna unmute her. So I have a suggestion. I'm um, like, remember when you said you were shy? When you're doing like that public speaking, you can pretend all the audience are carrots. <laughs> that is wonderful. I love it. And one thing that I've also learned is um, eye contact is so important. And I try to, it's hard when we're on, on virtual because I want to see all of you. I'm looking around to, to um, try and see everybody who's on camera. But I work hard to just look at somebody who's over here and then look at somebody who's over there. And sometimes I can just look like along the top of people's heads and they'll think that I'm looking right at them when I'm really just kind of looking over their head. I actually have a question for you. So I know that a lot of the students here are a little bit shy to speak. Um, they're scared to raise their hand. So do you have any tips or suggestions for them? Other than the ones that I talked about, I have found for myself that it just takes practice doing public speaking. The more you do it, the better you feel next time. And I can say a lot of times I'll walk away from doing, giving a speech, especially if I'm kind of talking off the top of my head and I'll go sit down and I'll be like, oh, I forgot. I didn't say this and I really wanted to say this. And, and even when I'm very well planned, I do that. And we just get right back up there and try again the next time. And when you start out, you know, a three minute speech is pretty good. And then eventually you start working up to doing bigger, longer, and more in-depth kind of speeches and programs. All right, thank you, Ms. Pam. Thank you so much for joining us today. And does anyone else have any questions for her? Okay, I think Steve does. I'm going to unmute you. Yeah, Pam, I know you're talking about 4-H. Why don't you explain a little bit about 4-H and how they have different projects and the, the kids you serve, their ages, and, and how it ties into the University of Connecticut? Okay, sounds good. Okay, let's see. If anyone has heard of 4-H before, like wave your hands or wave your virtual hand or something, we'll see if anybody knows. No, most people are saying no. So 4-H is like Scouts or Boys and Girls Club. A lot of people are familiar with Scouts. It started over a hundred years ago in 1904, and it was a way for 
the United States Department of Agriculture to teach young farmers about new ideas in farming. So 4-H is what we want to do is we want to prepare adults for the future by teaching them when they're young. So you guys are the voice of the future. So that's why we have 4-H is because we want you guys to know all the best things and technology and things like that for 4-H. So it used to be a lot of stuff about cows and things like that, but now we do a lot of technology. We do robotics. We do lots of cooking and nutrition. Some kids have a club in their community, like a, a Boy Scout troop or a Girl Scout troop would be. They have a 4-H club, but we also have after-school programs. We have some in-school programs, which is really, really fun. Uh, the kids in 4-H, we have a special program for five, six, and seven-year-olds. And then the seven to 19-year-olds are in the club programs, can be enrolled members. Let's see, did I cover it all, Steve? Yeah, we, we do uh, Expressive Arts Day. There's some singing and dancing. We have the 4-H Fair where they get ribbons and things like that. Yes. Public speaking. Let's see, what else have I been involved in? <laughs> <laughs> Horses, cows, like you said, chickens, a lot of rabbit projects, archery. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, just there's always something much, to learn. Anything that you would like to do can be a 4-H project for you. Do we have a question? Yeah, I think Sky has a question. Let me unmute her. Is it online or is it do do we go to a certain place or keep away from each other? <laughs> well, right now pretty much everything is online because that's our life right now. Um, most of the time it is in person, but we do have some, we have an Ozobot club and that is a virtual club. So the kids who are in that club, they all have Ozobots. We meet twice a month and they're from all over the the state of Connecticut so anybody can join no matter where they live because we meet on the computer. I hate this coronavirus right now. I want to see my teacher in person. I want to see you guys in person but I can't because of this virus. I hate this virus. <laughs> I am with you. Everything's there. online like technology, classwork is all online not in person. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Ms. Pam. If you guys have any questions for Ms. Pam, um, I could send you guys her Gmail if you wanted to. And um, Ms. Pam, if you wanted to send me like a website or the information to the program that you mentioned before, um, you can feel free to email it to me and I could send it over to the students if you guys were interested about it or if you wanted to look more into it. Um, thank you, Ms. Pam, for coming. I'm going to unmute everyone here so you guys can say a thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.